Your brand message as a business is everything. It's your ticket to viability, productivity, and connectivity with your customers. It's one of your first and only chances to make a positive first impression because after all, the customer is always right. First impressions of a business can be formed in just seven seconds according to forms, making the impact of a good first impression not overstated. Brianna Gunn knows all about positive and effective brand messaging. She's a messaging and funnel specialist working with business owners and entrepreneurs to create messages and processes that inspire loyalty, momentum, and action, which leverages trust, authenticity, and most importantly, profitability. She joined me this week to tell me all about how to build effective brands in business. I'm Kevin McShan. Let's have this conversation. Me too. So, Brianna, if you're ready, I'll welcome you to the program. And I'm excited to talk to you this morning all about messaging. Great to be with you. And thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Brianna, I know uh, that you focus on messaging and helping your clients create effective messages. Uh, so, I'm wondering if you could tell me all about the great work that you do. I'd love to. So, messaging is so important because it's it's literally the words that come out of our mouth the words that are on the page the words that land in our inbox on social media and people don't in my experience people don't pay close attention to how their message is received across platforms so we want to sound a certain way but we get sucked into, oh, I'm supposed to sound this way because I'm on Facebook and I'm supposed to sound this way on Instagram and my email needs to be more professional. And in reality, that's confusing for your audience. And you really need to have a cohesive message across platforms so that no matter where people find you, you sound like you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have a background in journalism, so I know all about uh, cohesive and straight to the point message. So I can agree with that. So. Very cool. That's awesome. I actually have a, a pre-law degree. I should have gotten a journalism degree. It would have been much more on point with what I'm doing now. Absolutely. Well, we live and we learn, right? We do. So tell me, when you think of messaging, what, what comes to mind? Well, you know, hosting, uh, hosting. Uh, this is the second uh, podcast that I've hosted. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to messaging for a large a group of people, you want to be as uh, create, uh, creative as possible and as eye-catching and as concise as possible because uh, sadly, uh, people's attention spans are short, right? So uh, you have... In journalism, we tell uh, tell you you have uh, thirty to ninety s seconds to tell a story, so you have to be yeah. as uh, concise and as appealing as possible, huh? You do, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but our attention span—it used to be that you had thirty seconds to make a good impression, and now you have more like three seconds to make a good impression. Everything's you know? on TikTok these days, right now. Well, it, it, it's it's it's. I think it's a. a partly TikTok. I think it's partly reels. I think it's, it's Netflix and instant gratification. If we're not engaged and entertained right away, we're gone. 
Absolutely. You know, if I, I, I'm not uh, uh, intrigued by, by the previews, I move on myself, right? So. Right. You know, we went, um, my family went to go see um, the new, um, the new Marvel movie, uh, Venom, mm -hmm. uh, at the drive-in. And it, it's one of those things where, you know, even with movies, like if they don't move fast enough, you get bored. And we left and it was, it was a good movie, but it wasn't a great movie. It was, it was kind of stilted and slow and you know, we, we were talking about it and, and it was, it, 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 I was thinking, you know, from a marketing standpoint, how could they have done this differently? What could they have changed? How could they have made it move faster? And then I stopped myself and I was like, why am I wanting everything to be instant? And I, and, and it just, it hit me that, especially through the pandemic, you know, we've been in front of Netflix for two years now, whereas it used to be kind of like the thing you did after work or the thing, you, you, you know, our entertainment has changed. And so our messaging has to change with it. We need to make sure that we're hooking people in right away. We can't wait to get to the point, you know, because if we, if we don't get to the point for however long, people aren't going to stay engaged. And the same thing with the podcast, you know, people either are like, yes, I really want to hear about this, or they're, or they're gone. You know? uh, well, <laughs> that, that's, uh, you know, that's what, why you have to know the audience you're serving, right? You know all about that. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is you, if you don't understand your clients, your messaging is not going to be clear and crisp and easily understood because you have, you don't have the clarity to be able to bring down or, or compress what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you, that you talk to the people that you want to serve. You know, it's so many people are like, oh, I don't know any, I don't know. I haven't found any clients or I don't know anyone or, you know, just start, start talking to anyone who's willing to answer your questions. And well, that, that, that's part of the reason I started this podcast, right? I, I'm, yeah. I'm a journalist by training and I wanted a way to uh, expand my resume. And uh, I want, because I was, I was an old sports reporter, right? So I wanted to prove that I could cover more than sports. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to uh, start this podcast to show my journalism diversification because everybody wants to be the, the next sportscaster, right? So sometimes you have to expand what you offer as well. Yeah, and you have to be fluid, especially in today's world. You have to be fluid and able to shift and adjust. You know, if what you said doesn't land, you need to be able to describe it at least three different ways so that you can clarify what you were talking about to the people that you're trying to capture. So yeah, that and I, yeah I, you know, I serve on a... a Children's Treatment uh, Center board uh, for their Family Advisory Council and our monthly meeting was last night and we were talking about uh, how to engage uh, families with disabilities uh, because every month uh, the center comes out with something they call fa fan mail and it's family mail to tell uh, the parents all about what's happening at the center and, and one of the things they're finding is not a lot of parents are opening the e emails at the beginning of every month so they're trying to come up with different w ways to engage with parents as well so yeah and, and it's, it's hard you know I get a weekly email from my son's teachers and um, he recently, we recently lost my grandmother and he was, my son was very, very close with my grandparents, his great grandparents. And so the loss has been really difficult because now he doesn't have a connection. I mean, he's still, he's, he, you, you always have your memories, right? But not being able to pick up the phone and call them has been a really big adjustment for him. And well, so he, yeah, I, um, I'm sorry for your loss. And Oh, it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I was telling you before this started that uh, a whole, uh, I'm doing a whole bunch of family stuff this weekend because it's my grandmother's birthday. And I know, uh, I know through the pa pandemic that we've all uh, valued human connection, huh? That we have. And, and, you know, my grandparents were in their nineties, so it wasn't like we, we were, it was an unexpected thing, but
but we had him join a grief support group for kids that's run by a local charity in the town, which has been a really incredible um, mentorship opportunity for him and for me, because I'm learning a lot about the grief process and, and supporting others, which has been really great. But to tie it back to messaging, they have started doing um, uh, video. So they email out a video where they, they sit down in front of a camera and do the updates verbally. And then they take the transcript and drive it down below the video um, for the families. And there we're noticing that we're getting a lot better response rate and open rate because we're including the auditory and the video component because we're bringing together more learning styles and processing styles. Um, so maybe that's something you could bring to your to your meeting and see if they'd be willing to do some kind of a video or even a recorded audio for their update and see if that helps get those. Get the conversion rate. Yeah I, yeah, I had uh, suggested to them because uh, that they were looking for like, uh, different ways of engagement in terms of a video because it's um, the their newsletter is, is just uh, pictures and words and I said instead of doing that all every month maybe you incorporate a, a, a two to three minute video uh, and tell parents the, the the highlights of what you want them to know because then uh, like you said, we all have different learning styles, right? So, mm -hmm. so and when I've, you I, to those, it, it really makes a difference because people aren't struggling to be uh, to feel like they understand. They they can you know consume what makes sense to them. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I'm going to ask you this next question this way. So, oh, based on our discussion this morning, uh, what do you think are the top three um, uh, ingredients to forming a successful business relationship? I think the first one is being open and being ready and available to receive information from someone else. I think the second piece is being vulnerable and being able to share the pieces of yourself and your business that maybe are a little uncomfortable, but they make you really unique and special. And then I think the third component is actually following up. So not letting those relationships go stale, continuing to, to keep the conversation open and, and really being communicative. So you, you, when you combine the vulnerability piece and the receptive piece with the follow-up piece, you end up building really positive, strong relationships. Absolutely. And you know, Brad, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, October is actually National Disability Employment Awareness Month. It is. It is indeed. So uh, just a little bit about me as well. I was born with um, a cerebral palsy and part of my uh, professional uh, portfolio has been working with individuals uh, that have disabilities and I help them find work. And I'm, I'm curious to ask you about the importance of the month and observing it and uh, the importance of giving individuals with dis disabilities a job as an entrepreneur yourself? I think it's incredibly important that we employ the right person for the job, regardless of um, whether they have a disability. I, I you know, it's, it's one of those things that it, it's such a challenge. You know, my, my son has something called aplastic anemia. It um, doesn't affect him in the day-to-day -day anymore. But for three and a half years, he couldn't be around other people because he had no immune system. And trying to explain that to a kid is really, really hard. And so it's, and it's still a challenge for us trying to explain, you know, that you're different. It's not, and it's not that he's different in a bad way. You're, I think that everyone is, is wonderful and unique in their own way. Like you have an incredible set of skills. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And you know, when, I, when you invited me to be on the podcast, I was so incredibly excited. I didn't know anything about you other than I listened to some episodes. I thought they were fantastic. You ask great questions. You have great dialogue. You're highly intelligent. There's so much good. And I think people need to stop looking at the, the, the disability and start looking at the person. You know, yeah, absolutely. You know, I always told 
employers when I worked in uh, inclusive employment that sometimes you have to uh, fit the job to the person instead of uh, fitting the person to the job, right? Absolutely. And I think you end up with, with better results when you do that because you, you, when you diversify your base and you diversify your business, you get ideas that you maybe wouldn't have gotten if someone didn't have a limitation or, um, you know, you get really incredible feedback when you have a diverse population to pull from. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of diversity, I'm also uh, fascinated to get your uh, perspective on how do you think we uh, can create m more uh, diverse opportunities uh, for women specifically to uh, succeed in business? I think it's it's definitely changed in the last two years. I'm seeing more and more and more women enter the online space and you know step into power roles. Um, I think we have a long way to go, but I think that not being, not being afraid to apply for the job that you don't think you're fully qualified for, not being able, not being afraid to, you know, apply for the thing that maybe you, you, you is a dream position or a dream role for you, not being afraid to go out on your own. Um, it really is what you make it at this point, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that you also have used your customer uh, service experience to sort of close the gap in messaging. So I'm wondering, from a customer service perspective, what are the top three things you think people need to uh, remember, remember when it comes to marketing? I think the biggest thing when it comes to customer service and marketing is remembering that the customer is always right. Even if they're wrong, they're right. And then from there, you can, you can create a dialogue and communication piece that takes into account that, that tenant, you know, that your, your customer is always right. And, and you can really start to have a conversation around whatever the struggle they're having is versus falling into the trap of lecturing. Oh, yeah, I'm also uh, wondering your thoughts on how we make sure um, entrepreneurs succeed uh, in terms of messaging as they try, uh, try to reacquire custom, uh, customers following the pandemic. I think the biggest thing in, in messaging that has shifted pre-pandemic to today is the transparency piece. It's not enough to rent a fancy car or a big house or showcase your Lamborghini. You need to have the clout to back it up and you need to be transparent with your results and the results you bring your clients. So testimonials are becoming far more important. Um, they've always been important, but they, they carry much more weight now. You know, if as you're looking to acquire customers, being very transparent about your journey, about the struggles that you've had, about diversity and inclusiveness and being very, very open with those pieces is becoming more and more important. And it's going to be even more important going into next year, I think, as we kind of stabilize and find our new normal and our new footing. Um, you know, it really is key that we are open to new ideas and always learning and always growing. And I think that's the biggest change that entrepreneurs need to make. It's no longer good enough to just do what we've always done. We need to take steps to be better. Yeah, absolutely. And anyone who is watching this who may be inspired to start their own business from a marketing and messaging standpoint, what would you tell them for success? I would say don't give up. Being an entrepreneur is a challenge. Doesn't matter what kind of entrepreneur you are, there's challenges for every single skill set out there. So being being open and being ready to take the leap, do the thing, even if you don't have all the answers is really what's going to get propel you forward because it's okay to not know everything. And in fact, I have found that some of my favorite clients actually appreciate 
the fact that, you know, I'm like, you know what, I don't know the answer to that, but I can find out. I know where to look for that. Or I know someone who has the answer um, or, you know what, I don't know, but let's figure it out together. Just being that transparent, honest, forthright, um, open person is going to get you very, very far. Yeah, absolutely. And I know uh, this weekend that you're uh, hitting the skies and, and headed out to Denver. So I'm also uh, curious to ask, to ask you about business travel and how do you think that'll rebound after the pandemic has subsided a little bit? I think it's definitely going to rebound. I'm already seeing um, lots of in-person events scheduled for next year. You know what whether or not they actually fly and take off is is remains to be seen but they're definitely you know there's lots of calls for speakers there's lots of um things being coordinated um i'm putting on a mastermind in february so there's a lot of there's a lot of, going to be a lot of opportunity to travel for business in the next 12 months um i think it all has to do with your comfort level though if you're comfortable traveling for business if you're comfortable being around other people then it's a great opportunity for you if you're still not comfortable then you know i think that that the virtual attendance is is going to become a very necessary thing i i'm seeing a lot of in-person events also provide a virtual ticket where they have a videographer and you're able to tune in from your home i think that's going to become a, a normal situation um but yeah i think that that I, th I think, tr I don't think travel is going away. I think it's, it's definitely changed the way we travel because of the pandemic and, and all of that. But um, at its core, you know, it really is about getting back to being in front of people and in getting your visibility, getting visible and staying visible. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, people want to spread their wings again, huh? They totally do. They're like, let me fly, please. Add me to that list for sure. <laughs> I know when we were, we were talking before you mentioned we're not very far apart. I live in, I live in Michigan and you're in, in Windsor and, um, you know, I miss going to Canada and you miss coming to the States and, you know, we only have a few more weeks before we can actually do that again. It's so exciting. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. So, you know, I'm reminded of something my mother told me. She said one of the things that the pandemic has taught her was a uh, increased or a renewed appreciation for patience. Huh? Oh my gosh, your mother is is a smart woman. And absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely. In the a couple of minutes I have left with you this morning, I'm curious to ask you about uh, connecting on a one-on-one -on -one level with your clients, because you know, uh, you say you pride yourself on helping them create their own individual messages. So I'm wondering if you could tell me about that. Sure. So what we do is I use something called a copy brief that has a list of questions that I can, I ask, you know, so that I can get to know you a little bit better. And um, because I'm a ghost writer, meaning I write the words that are, that come out of your mouth, so to speak, um, I'm able to take what you share in that document and write copy that is relevant, that is, um, in your voice because you were you shared you know what you want to sound like what you want to what you want to emote how you how you want to interact with your people and doing that that little copy brief that i send out which isn't so little it takes about an hour to complete um really helps me dive in and sound like you so that when you are um, putting the messaging that I create out there, there isn't a gap between someone meeting you in person and meeting you online. Yeah, absolutely. And the diversification in messaging, like we talked to, uh, about before, before is, has never been so important, Tom. Huh? It has never been so important. No, that's absolutely right. Hey, Brianna, my final question for you is I'm wondering if you've given any thought uh, to how you want your personal and professional legacy uh, to be defined. And for anyone that wants to get a hold of you, what, what's the best way they can do that? Well, I'm on a mission to help 100 entrepreneurs create content that they are proud of and that helps conversions in the next two years. 
if that if you are someone who needs someone like me who you aren't sure what your messaging should sound like you aren't sure where you need to show up you can find me at briannagun.com or you can go to briannagun.com forward slash magazine and download my magazine that has tips to help you write your own copy Hey, fantastic. Hey, Brianna, I really appreciated our time together. And now that I know that we're not that far apart, we have to stay in touch. But for now, I want to thank you for be being here. Your time, energy, and efforts on my behalf are most appreciated. Thank you for having me, Kevin. This has been an absolutely wonderful time. You're fantastic. <laughs>